Welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at Age of Steam Deluxe Edition. Age of Steam is a one to six player route building economic train game where you take the role of railway company owners. You will be placing track, connecting cities and towns, and moving goods, trying to become the best railway company owner. How do you become the best railway company owner and win the game? By having the most victory points at the end of the final turn. Victory points are earned through the income track, completed track, and then subtracting your shares issued. Now that we know what the winning condition is, let's take a look at the components, setup, and how gameplay works in Age of Steam Deluxe Edition. Now let's take a look at the components. You have three double-sided main game board maps, display boards, track tiles, new city tiles, turn track marker, town discs, dice, in each of the player colors, you have track ownership trains, as well as the interchangeable track ownership discs and player discs. Goods cubes, money, cloth bag, and finally your rule book. Now let's take a look at the setup. We're going to be setting this up for a three player game, which takes nine steps. Step one, place the map board. You will choose a map and place the map in the middle of the play area. For this game, we'll be setting this up with the Rust map. And keep in mind that some maps are for a certain number of players. This is referenced in the rulebook. Step two, place display boards. Separate and place display boards next to your map board. Step three, create resource pools. First, you'll separate the track tiles and city tiles. Then you will create a pool for track tiles, money, new city tiles, town discs, and dice next to the map board. Step four, place the turn track marker. Place the turn track marker on the start location on the turn track. Step five, place goods cubes. You will put all the goods cubes in the cloth bag. You will place the white cubes to the side unless you're playing with the southern US map. Then you will draw cubes out of the bag randomly to fill the goods display. You will fill it left to right and top to bottom. Step six, place starting goods. You'll randomly draw three goods cubes to place in Pittsburgh, then three in Wheeling, and then for the remaining cities, you will draw two. Step seven, choose a starting color and get player components. Choose a color and get 20 of the 25 train ownership trains or discs, and then five player discs. Step eight, place your player discs. You'll place a disc on the issue shares first box, or two shares. Next to the selected actions, you'll place one on the move goods one link, income track at zero, then finally players will roll three die and place the final player disc on the turn order track. The highest number rolled would place theirs first, the second highest would place theirs second, and then the lowest would place theirs last. Step nine, get starting money. You will get 10 in starting money. Now let's take a look at the gameplay. The game consists of a number of turns based on the number of players. This information is listed on the turn track on the display boards. A turn consists of 10 phases. Issue shares, determine player order, select actions, build track, move goods, collect income, pay expenses, income reduction, goods growth, and advanced turn. Now let's look at each in detail. Phase one, issue shares. In turn order, players will decide if they want to issue shares. For each share issued, you would gain $5 and then move your disc one space on this track. It's good to keep in mind that you will pay expenses later in the turn based on the number of shares issued. Also keep in mind that for this map, the max is 15 shares. So in this case, yellow and blue issued one share, gaining them $5, and pink issued two shares, gaining them $10. Phase two, determine player order. Move the player discs above the turn order track and starting with the first player going clockwise, you would bid on turn order. The starting bid is $1 or pass. If you choose to pass on the starting bid, you would go last. The bidding would go around and each subsequent bid must be at least $1 more than the previous bid. At the end of the bidding, the top two would pay their full amount and place their player disc on first and second. Then depending on the number of players, a number of players will pay half of their bid. In a four-player game, the third place person would pay half. In a five-player game, the third and fourth person would pay half. And then in a six-player game, the third, fourth, and fifth place person would pay half. When paying half, you always round up. So in this case, blue bid two, 
pink bid five, yellow passed, and then blue passed. So first place, pink had to pay five. Second place, blue had to pay two for their bid. And then yellow didn't pay anything. If someone had the turn order select action, they may pass once for free. Then you'll place the player disc on the turn order spot they receive. Phase three, select actions. In turn order, players will choose select actions or special abilities. There are seven select actions or special abilities. First move, this occurs in phase five, you will get to move goods first in both rounds. First build, this takes place in phase four, and you get to build track first. Engineer, this happens in phase four, and you get to build four track tiles instead of three. Locomotive, this happens immediately, and you get to move the link up one on the move goods track. Urbanization, this happens in phase four. You get to place one of the new cities on a town before building track. Production, this happens in phase nine. You get to draw two goods cubes and place them randomly on the empty space in the goods display. And then finally, turn order. This happens in phase two. You get one free pass when bidding on player order. So in this case, pink chose the engineer, blue chose first build, and yellow chose locomotive. So yellow went up one space on the move goods track immediately. Phase four, build track. In turn order, players may place three track tiles. If someone has the first build select action, they would go first, ignoring the turn order. If someone has the engineer select action, they may place four track tiles. And if somebody had the urbanization special action, they would get to place one of the new city tiles on a town before they build track. You would place a track tile or replace an existing track tile, connecting your track. Every player's first track tile must be next to a city. Once you've finished placing your track tiles, you would pay the bank the total money amount based on the build prices on the build track display board. This is based on location and complexity of the track, along with town locations, replacing track, and redirecting track. When you have successfully completed a link between a city or town, or city to city, or town to town, this link is completed and is permanently owned by the builder. You would permanently leave one of your track ownership trains on that link. If unfinished, you would place your track ownership train on that link, and then in the next turn, you must extend that link or you will lose your track ownership train, and then that link would become available for other players to extend and own. It's good to keep in mind that own track cannot be messed with in terms of their direction, but you can upgrade to a complex track to coexist in a space. So in this case, blue gets to build first. Phase five, move goods. In turn order, players may move one good cube to a city of the matching color. If you have the first move select action, you will go first in the two rounds of this phase. There must be track to complete the move and the goods cannot be moved more than the player's links on the move goods track. When you successfully move goods, you would get one income increase per link on the income track. And then that good would be returned to the bag. Then you would repeat this for a second round of move goods. And for one of the two rounds, instead of moving goods, you can increase on the move goods track. During this phase, you may also pass. Also during this phase, you can move goods using other players' tracks, but they would gain the income as well. So during this phase, pink moved two blue goods, gained two on the income track. Blue moved one good to gain one on the income track, and then went up on the move goods track. And then yellow moved two goods to gain two on the income track. Phase six, collect income. Players will receive money based on their location on the income track. So blue would get one, and pink and yellow would get two. Phase seven, pay expenses. During this phase, players would pay the total in red based on their location on the issue shares track as well as the move goods track. So they would pay $1 per share issued and $1 for every link. If you can't pay, your income would go down one for each dollar. If a player ever goes below zero, you lose the game immediately and are eliminated. And then all of your discs and trains would be removed from the boards. So in this case, pink would pay four plus one. Blue would pay five as well, three plus two, along with yellow. Phase eight, income reduction. During this phase, players will lose a number of income based on where their player's income disc is located. 
If they're located 11 through 20, they would lose 2. 21 through 30, they would lose 4. 31 through 40, they would lose 6. 41 through 50, they would lose 8. And anything over 50, they would lose 10. So in this case, none of our players are over 10, so they would not lose any in the income reduction. Phase 9. Goods growth. During this phase, you'll be placing goods cubes from the growth display board on the main map. If a player has the production select action, they would add two to the growth display before placing goods. They may place them on any two empty boxes on the goods display. Then players will roll a number of dice equal to the number of players. Then they would go to the corresponding columns from the numbers rolled and place from top to bottom those cubes in that city with the same number. You would roll dice twice first for the white side on the growth display, and then the brown. Keep in mind that you are only allowed to place them in cities on the map. So for cities A through H, you would not place any growth cubes until they're on the map. And then finally, phase 10, advance the turn marker. You would advance the turn marker on the turn marker track. Then turns will continue until you reach the end of the final turn. When you reach the end of the final turn, we would go into the final scoring. The final scoring takes three steps. Step one, gain three victory points for every dollar you have on the income track. So if you're located on 10 on the income track, you would get 30 victory points. Step two, you would get one victory point for each section of track that makes a complete link. And then step three, you would subtract three victory points for every share issued. Once you've totaled your number of victory points, the player with the most victory points is the best railroad owner and wins Age of Steam.